Hi everybody, welcome to my second video on home automation. I got great feedback from the last one. I've been doing a lot of work since then and I want to share with you the amazing things that this little thing can do for you and for your house. So let's take you to the dashboard. This is my home dashboard. This is the weather for the next five days. Pretty handy when you wake up in the morning. This is the calendar that is shared between the whole family. We have all our birthdays, anniversaries, any important dates listed over here. This is also integrated with my TV. So whenever my TV would switch on, it would send the next coming event into the TV. This is the energy profile for the house. So I have solar in the house along with the Tesla power wall. This tells me how much solar is generating at any point of time, how much is being exported or imported to the grid, how much energy does the power wall currently have and how much the solar was generating less than the house was consuming. Then the rest of the energy would be given by the power wall until it discharges completely and then it would kick in the grid. This is another graph that I have, a grid surplus. Uh, I have a home energy meter, generation 5, on the mains line. So this tells me at any point of time how much have I imported or exported to the grid in total. So at the end of the year, you want this to be zero if you want to maximize your profit from the solar. This is the frequent tasks for, that I need to do for the house, uh, specifically this one, Buzz Home, pretty handy. Uh, sometimes, you know, I'm unable to reach my wife because her phone is on silent. If I turn on this button, I have Alexa speak out a uh, message saying, hey, someone's calling you, please call them back immediately. And then my wife calls me back. This has come in pretty handy. So I would recommend everybody to have this. Uh, this tab is basically any light or switch that is on in the house or any door that is open. So let me turn on a couple of lights. Let's say kitchen light and welcome room light. So if you go back to the dashboard here, now you see that kitchen light and welcome light are on as well as the master bedroom fan is on. Uh, it's pretty handy to see what all is on at any point of time. So if you want, you can actually turn them off from here itself and it'll go away from the screen. This is my internet profile where uh, you see what is the download speed in the last test and the upload speed, the ping, how, what is the ping time and how many days has it been on. Uh, and then uh, this is my NAS, QNAP NAS hard drive statuses. So every night a test runs on the hard drives and makes sure that the status of the hard drive is healthy. Next tab is the thermostats in the house, uh, the lights as well, doors and windows. I think that this was their last as well. The cameras, at least this time, camera is by default streaming instead of just a snapshot. So these are the external cameras in the house. I have a Lorex NVR and I've integrated that with Home Assistant as well. So I'm getting the RTSP feeds and this is where it shows up. If you click on the camera, you get the uh, live high quality feed of that. This is floor plan. It gives me information on my whole house on a single screen, like what all lights are on or off, like if I turn on the kitchen light or if I turn on the welcome room light you know anything that is red over here is on even I can even control my uh, heating let's say uh, I turn on the heating in my master bedroom heat so it's showing up as red so you can easily make sure at night everything is turned off pretty handy plugin I love it it took me a time to configure and create the di uh, the, the blueprint for the house it was all done using uh, manual tape measure and uh, you know <laughs> my wife's help <laughs> so thank you to her this is the previous version one of my dashboard I've come a long way from where I was uh, same thing with my NAS and my internet and uh, system monitor for the Raspberry Pi that is running the home assistant and then the new charts that I've added to Grafana this gives me a beautiful view of my thermostats or temperatures in the house uh, this one tells me my energy profile I can actually go last x number of days or even a year or five years i love it about grafana and influx gb it's a uh, very lightweight it's actually running on a raspberry pi uh, i don't know how these guys have done it but it's amazing this is the same as my home screen the actual pg e surplus how much i've exported or imported to the grid this is my room temperatures as well as this chart is very handy to me you could have your thermostat on heat from 10 p.m at night to 8 in the morning right but it's not that it's running for exactly 12 hours. This chart tells me exactly when heating was on, even though my thermostat was on from, let's say, at 7.36 p.m. until uh, 7.47 until in the morning. But my thermostat actually ran in the master bedroom only between these, these times. So 
it gives me you can actually put it on heat or cool or even if it's auto it'll show you uh, exactly when the compressor or the heating was running so that if you have any tenants in the house you can tell them at the end of the at the end of the month how much they've used uh, the heating or cooling and then you know charge them accordingly as well as it gives you a good indication of what is the heat loss in any room right, and then I have the internet graph over here and I have the humidity graph over here the best part is that you can go through a history of your month or year or even five years and see how your house is doing so this was home assistant so let me share with you the automations I've done using app daemon you know I've done a lot more than last time <laughs> So this is Alexa talking clock. This is actually available as a plugin on the Home Assistant community. So if you look at the app demon apps, you will see the Alexa talking clock is listed over here. And what it does is that it makes Alexa speak out the time at your specified interval. It's 9 p.m. It's 9.30 p.m. Good night and sweet dreams. I've got really good feedback on this and uh, a lot of downloads for this app and I'm pretty happy that people are using it. So thank you so much for uh, you know your consideration. And then next is the door window announce controller. So whenever my garage door opens or closes, Alexa says, hey, uh, your attention please. The garage door big or garage door small has been opened or closed. Your attention please. The garage door big has been opened. Your attention, please. The garage door big has been closed. It's the doorway controller. Not much has changed other, other than that, that I've added an outdoor Alexa as well to actually greet the guests. So now, depending on the time of the day, it would actually greet the guest with good morning, welcome, I've notified the family, someone will be there shortly, or good afternoon or good evening. And if it's uh, between 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. in the morning, it'll simply say, hi, welcome, please ring the bell on your left if you want to notify the family of your arrival. Good evening, welcome. I've notified the family. Someone will be at the door shortly. Your attention, please. There is someone at the door. The next one was my energy meter controller. As uh, you know, you saw that my this grid surplus is yearly. At the end of the year, PG&E would either give you a refund for the excess you've generated, which is less than two cents per kilowatt, whereas they charge you 26, 28 cents per kilowatt, which is ridiculous, I think. But then uh, this meter has to be reset every year. So I just made an automation for that. So I don't forget to reset the meter at the end of the year. The fan speed controller, I think this was from my previous video. This was already there. Uh, depending on the room temperature in the room, it would set the fan to off, low, medium, or high automatically. You know, if the time is between uh, your sleeping time. Um, the festival lights sentry is, uh, so basically I had uh, somebody steal my laser lights outside the house. And then I decided that this, I won't let that happen this time. So I put a motion sensor right near the laser. So the moment it detects that there's a, a motion detected, it would uh, alert me in the house as well as set up siren with bright LEDs to scare off the thief. This has come in handy one time and I'm very happy that I did it because it would have cost me otherwise another hundred dollars. <laughs> right, so there's my laser. Uh, makes the house look beautiful. And this is the laser that someone stole last season. So if I go close to the laser now, So this should be enough to scare the thief away. This is the bus controller that I have. So this is what I use to control the Alexa to tell my wife that someone's calling her. Please call them back immediately. Someone's calling you. Please pick up the phone or call them back immediately. So here's the HVAC controller. This has been updated from the last time. So now I actually have one more feature in it called air cycle. So I want to circulate air in my house regularly at regular intervals so that the air it is not stale in any part at any time. And this helps me do that. Your 
attention please. The maximum heating temperature limit in this room is 72. Your attention please. The minimum cooling temperature limit in this room is 67. Attention please, this room's door or window has been open since the past 60 seconds. I've turned off the air conditioning. This is my internet health controller, so it, it's basically is responsible for rebooting the internet uh, every time the download, upload, or ping speed falls below a certain threshold. Been really handy. Just a note that I use a Z-Wave socket to control the, the modem on and off. I use Z-Wave because if you use a Wi-Fi outlet, once a router is off, you will not be able to communicate back with your Wi-Fi switch. I have the iOS companion app in which I have actions and events defined, and I'll show you the app. Uh, but I do five small tasks with it, opening the garage, closing the garage, as well as the buzzing the home. And you could actually use the automations inside Home Assistant, but I want to be completely Python. And this is how you capture iOS events and use Home Assistant to control your actions. The perimeter rights controller. This one is what turns on and off the outside lights at the sunset, as well as turn them off at sunrise. Also, I think I uh, showed this last time that if festival lights are connected, it would turn off the interior lights and keep them off until 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. at night and uh, turn them on again. So this is what I talked about in the beginning of the video, TV notifications. The moment you turn on your TV, it would pop up a balloon on the top, right? Giving you the information about the next event that is coming in. So this is my integration using the TV, the Google Calendar, as well as my uh, notification service that I need to connect to the TV. If the old state was off and the new state is playing, then it just runs the notification in 240 seconds. I have done that because I don't want to miss the notification as sometimes you just turn on the TV and uh, forget to look at it. That's it. This is the automations I've done using AppDaemon. So, so let me know what you think and uh, thanks for watching the video.